Thank you. So I'm affiliated with the Schulich Faculty of Chemistry and also GDEP, the Grand Technion Energy Program, and RBNI, the Nano um, Institute. And I would like to talk today about how we use nanoparticles to um, produce hydrogen from um, sunlight and water. How do I move this? <laughs> okay, so that was cute. Um, so basically photocatalysis has been around for four decades now. The concept is very simple and kind of similar to what we are doing with solar cells. We have a semiconductor that absorbs the light, produces charges, charge carriers. Um, instead of pulling them away and producing electricity, we use those charge carriers to promote a chemical reaction. And in particular, we're interested in water splitting because then we can have hydrogen, which we all know is really useful. The problem is that this very, very simplistic cartoon does not tell the full story. We have a lot of requirements when it comes to choosing the appropriate semiconductor. Um, requirements on the band gap, it needs to be active in the visible, but the energy gap needs to be wider than what's required for splitting water. You want a particular um, location compared to the vacuum. Uh, you want the material to be cheap. You want it to be stable. So it's really, really hard to find an appropriate semiconductor. And there are also very challenging things when it comes to the mechanism of the process. We're producing charge carriers, negative and positive holes and electrons. These really want to combine. When they combine, we lose the energy. So what people typically did in the past was to grow a metal catalyst on the semiconductor. The assumption was that the electrons will go into the metal, you form charge separation, and um, the metal is also a catalyst. The problem, what we know now, is that even though the electrons go into the metal, they do not stay there forever. They go back to the semiconductor and we lose them. And the window of time that we have to promote the chemical reaction is um, not sufficient. So I come from the field of nanoparticles, in particular colloidal nanoparticles, and um, we already heard a beautiful talk about what we can do with nanostructuring. The nice thing about nano is that we are in the size region between atoms and a chunk of material. And in this size region, the properties of the material start to change as respect to the size and also the shape. So the community now can form a nice gallery of different semiconductors, metal, metal oxides. We can control the size, we can control the shape. You can see here um, that it's highly crystalline. You can see uh, spherical particles, rod, tetrapods. We can play with the composition. And what my lab is doing, we're actually sculpting on the nanoscale. So not only do we have this control over the different um, building blocks, but we actually make something with them, we combine them together, we control the composition, the size, the shape, but also the overall morphology, how they connect to one each other. And you can see here different um, things that we've made. I'm gonna focus on this structure. Uh, what we have here is two different semiconductors, a tiny little seed of cadmium selenide embedded in a rod of cadmium sulfide. With these two semiconductors, the holes, the positive charges, go into the seed and they are localized there. The electrons are delocalized, they can move along the rod, and then they go into the platinum tip. What we have now is charge separation over three different materials rather than two, and reaction sites that are physically separated from each other. So with this um, architecture, um, and also by understanding the mechanism, we were able to obtain 100% conversion of photons to hydrogen. Now this is not really um, energy conversion yet, because we're only tackling the reduction half reaction, but it's a really nice scientific breakthrough because it tells us that we have materials that are really good in absorbing light in the visible range, that they produce charge carriers, these carriers do not recombine, the electrons go into um, the platinum, we can also make nickel tips and they are as active, um, and uh, we do not have any losses, so we know exactly where things are. So um, this is the TEM. You can see how the particles look like um, for real, not to just uh, stay with cartoons. And um, let me 
show you a nice uh, video that shows a benefit of these things. What you see here is water with our particles. You cannot see the particles, they're too small. But you can see that upon illumination, we get a lot of bubbles of hydrogen. So this is as simple as it gets. Water, our particles, and light, and you get hydrogen. No need for electrodes, no need to, for devices, very, very simple. As I mentioned, we're only making the hydrogen half reaction so far. Um, so the problem is that our materials, cadmium sulfide is not stable for overall water splitting. The holes, um, the positive charges accumulate on it and it degrades. What we found is that if we grow a metal oxide on our particles, it actually stabilizes the structure. And we're doing that by doing the same thing, photocatalysis. Instead of using the positive charges to oxidize water, we oxidize a metal cation, and then we have a deposition of a metal oxide, and with the metal oxide, the structure is actually stable uh, for overall uh, water splitting. We have some initial results uh, for all um, full, real, overall water splitting, and I hope that if you'll invite me next year, I'll be able to share some real breakthroughs on that front. Um, I would like to thank my group. Uh, most of the work was done by Philip Kalishman, a postdoc from um, UC Berkeley who uh, returned by now to the US, and Dr. Rifat Nakibli. Um, and I want to thank, again, um, funding the GTEP, RBNI, uh, the Technion, and also the i that um, actually made all this possible. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.